test the home, test the work. The testing that we do is an ERMI. The reason why we end up doing an ERMI is a lot of these people end up living in rentals. And when it comes to a rental, we can't fix that house or that apartment. The goal is to get them out as quickly as possible and as inexpensively as possible. Landlords will not get them back their damaged deposit unless you do an ERMI. If you do an ERMI, and if you give them a medical diagnosis of SIRS or mycotoxin-based illness, what works for you in your practice, and they have those two pieces of information, they actually have protection from the American Housing Act and the Disability Act that legally puts them in a position with just the right words, which I've penned many a letter, that springs them out of that lease typically gets them some money back and gives them some resources that they can go find a clean place to live. And then the next piece back of it is teaching them what a clean place to live looks like. And that's where I come in. That's the role I end up playing a lot with these patients is teaching them how to find a clean place to live. And then teaching them, most importantly, how to move from space A to space B. Because what they always do is they bring their stuff with them and then they're right back saying that they're reacting again. And yeah, they're reacting, it's real. It's not the building, it's their stuff. This is a slide from Dr. Dennis that will show you that the mold counts in these two rooms are the same. Mold can be very hidden. This is the treatment protocol recommended by Dr. Dennis. This is the one that worked for my family. If you can start getting EC3 candles into these people's hands, the citrus enzyme breaks down the mycotoxins, and here's the difference. You can use vinegar, you can use hydrogen peroxide, you can use all these other things, but the problem is those mycotoxins are a protein that need to be broken down by an enzyme. And, and, and enzyme you need to, until you do that process, that patient is going to continue to react. And I happen to be the patient who is sensitive enough that when a mold spore went off, I feel it immediately. And the kids were equally as sensitive. So I was able to do all sorts of trial and error and figure out, yeah, the EC3 products work. They would actually not react to their clothing. They wouldn't react to the environment around them as long as I kept using high levels of enzymes right at first as we were moving from location to location until we got into a safe space. Now we very rarely need to use it at all. Other than the fact that we still use it in the laundry. Avoid the cross-contamination. The key to the cross-contamination is, is that mold is like bed bugs. It's one of the best examples I can think of. You're going to continue to deal with it, deal with it, deal with it, deal with it, unless you get rid of the stuff or you clean the stuff. The blessing is with EC3, you can go back and clean and clean and clean and clean and clean. And as they start to heal, they'll start figuring out, you know what, I'm reacting to this, I don't need it. 